people tend to use drugs as a way of dealing with painful situations or problem areas or stress in their lives. And it seems as if what you're suggesting is that by getting in touch with your own body, uh, that you can accomplish the, you know, the same end goal without all the harmful uh, byproducts of drug use. True. <clears throat> and so one of my areas as a somatic psychologist is in biofeedback training. Mm -hmm. And so with biofeedback training, you can learn the skills of self-regulation mm -hmm. so that you can uh, regulate your physiology in a way that reduces headaches, for example so that you don't need to take lots of aspirin in order to, or Tylenol or whatever, yeah. in order to take care of a headache. So that many difficulties, you can either modify the reaction um, or eliminate it. Mm -hmm. And it is a marvelous thing to give the person that kind of control, mm -hmm. that kind of capacity to create situations uh -huh. and how you're going to react to them. What led you into this field? Into this field. Mm -hmm. I have had a long time interest in yoga and I also had a, an interest originally in the uh, change in brain activity when learning took place. Mm -hmm. And so in, in my dissertation work I was interested in looking at the effects of visual stimulation on brain activity and then capacity to do things. Mm -hmm. uh, and from there I began to be interested in measuring physiological responses. And that led me into being interested in biofeedback in the early days. Mm -hmm. And then from there into teaching it and using it clinically. Well, so you're, you're doing two things. As a yoga practitioner, mm -hmm. you're really exploring this from the inside. Yes. As a biofeedback researcher, you're, you're being very technical, objective, uh -huh. precise uh, about it all. Mm -hmm. What about for the, for the average person? Uh, it seems that what you're doing is so complex and in some ways so distant. How, how can our viewers, for example, begin mm -hmm. to understand the applications of somatics or somatic mm -hmm. psychology in mm -hmm. their own lives. So while a person is watching TV, uh -huh. would there be a, a somatic approach to the experience? Uh -huh. Well, one of those might be to practice relaxing mm -hmm. while you're watching TV. TV itself is somewhat of a relaxant, even uh, with programs that are more strenuous, mm -hmm. it's still, because it is so visual and because it is so, um, in a way, a focusing of your attention and getting you away from other things that are happening in your life, there is a tendency to shift toward more relaxed brain waves while watching television. Mm -hmm. So it is a bit of a <coughs> move in that direction. So if the viewer was watching and paying attention to breathing, and perhaps doing what Benson talked about in his relaxation response, thinking one with the exhale, mm -hmm. and then taking another breath and thinking one again, mm -hmm. and keeping at that for something like 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. There is the relaxation response that comes with that, and a shift mm -hmm. in physiological response. So if, if those of you who are out there now mm -hmm. watching us were to begin to enter into that mode of the breathing and, and the relaxation, probably in 15 minutes or so as the interview progresses, our viewers will be in an altered state right, somewhat. They very well might be. And then what would, they, what would be the value of that? Well, one of the things, there are various physiological changes that go with that, mm -hmm. such as a reduction in blood pressure, a change in uh, brain waves to more alpha, mm -hmm. a change in muscle tension, a change in heart rate, yes. uh, in respiration, mm -hmm. uh, change in blood flow so that the hands become yeah. warmer. And are these changes and healthier? They're very much in the healthy direction. Uh -huh. The parasympathetic nervous system dominance is our maintenance and repair system. Mm -hmm. And we wouldn't want to be there all the time, but we need to be able to shift back and forth uh, when you're more alert and uh -huh. when you're more relaxed. And in a sense, is that reinforcing or strengthening uh, the immune system of the body? Mm -hmm. It might be sort of prevention for AIDS. Yeah, it could certainly help uh -huh. because the immune system is lowered, the functioning is lowered in stress mm -hmm. situations. And so the more we can learn about that, the better. 
So one of the aspects of your work then is teaching people how to activate their own immune systems. Quite. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of my areas of application of somatic psychology has to do with creative health mm -hmm. and the sense that you can learn health promoting behaviors, you can achieve a level of health and you can maintain it throughout various situations in your life, various periods in your life, and that you can take an active role in your health picture, which has to do with the immune system and whether it is getting the best help it can get from uh -huh. you. So by being aware of, of the relaxation response or by activating the relaxation mm -hmm. response, that's one major aspect of what you're doing. Yes, uh -huh. approached in a variety of ways. Mm -hmm. So there are many ways to to uh, enable the person to shift to a parasympathetic mm -hmm. nervous system mm -hmm. dominance, and we should do it once or twice a day, uh -huh. routinely. Mm -hmm.